here in Medjugorje and I'm with what's your name? Suzanne. Suzanne, where are you from? Jefferson City, Missouri. Wow. And first time for you in Medjugorje? The second time. Second time. Why did you come back? Because I... Why would you not come back? Mm -hmm. This is the most special place on earth. Yeah. And if you're trying to grow in your faith, if you... I, there's so many reasons to come back, but I, it's hard to describe. Yeah, it's something but in the heart, no? It, it is. And I originally prayed for 31 years mm -hmm. to come here. And I finally got here. And now I've been back twice in two years. So, yeah. And when the lady we, grabs yeah. hold of our lady grabs hold of you, she doesn't let go. <laughs> yes, that's how it goes, no? It, she somehow grasps your heart, no? And yes, she does. It's for men, women the same, you know, same for me. Same for him, our friend Mr. Bond. And um, why would you tell people come to Medjugorje? What is so special about this place? Again, it's very hard for me to put into words. I'm not good with explaining things. Mm -hmm. But I, it, this this town, this village, is a bubble of holiness. You will experience things that you will not experience anywhere else in the world. And your rosary may not turn gold. You may not see the sun spin, but the Blessed Mother and her son will touch you in a way that is just indescribable. It's, it's, you can't describe it right now. You feel also they call it that. It's a school here, a school of Our Lady. It is. Our guide just said that on one of our tours, that mm -hmm. this is a school of religion. Yeah. And, you know, we always need to keep learning no matter how old we are. And whether we were born into the Catholic faith or converted, um, there's always still more to learn. Mm -hmm. And you can always grow deeper and deeper in your faith. Mm -hmm. And if you really want to throw yourself into your faith, this is the place to do it. Beautiful. You made the experience that Our Lady wants that we surrender? Yes. That's oh, all about surrender? So definitely. Yeah. So since you said that, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you my little my miracle that um, happened to me since I've been here. Yeah. I traveled alone mm -hmm. and um, when I got here, uh, the, the tour company that I traveled with mm -hmm because I was alone, it kind of put me with a group that was already existing here. And that was wonderful, but I was in this hotel by myself, which was fine, don't be afraid of that. Um, but then I found, they kind of put me with another group, I kind of got passed around a little bit, which again, I'm not complaining, it has been, it has been amazing. But one of the ladies came up to me and said, hey, when you, because I had a private agenda taped to, for just me since I was alone. So one of the ladies came up and said, hey, you're going to be with us. And we're, we've been chosen to go to an apparition with Maria. Mm -hmm. And I just almost fell on my knees because, of course, it's a dream come true. Mm -hmm. And it's harder and harder these days as the visionaries mm -hmm. um, need to become more private. And it's harder to be present for an apparition. So um, I was just very excited. Well, then something happened and I got passed back to the other group mm -hmm. and um, I was told that I didn't get to go to the mm -hmm. apparition and I was devastated in my heart. And so I went to the statue of Our Lady mm -hmm. and I prayed my rosary by myself. And as brokenhearted as I was, I just said to her, um, I'm going to surrender my day to you. I'm going to surrender my trip to you. Wherever you want me to go, I will go exactly the way you tell me to. And it wasn't an hour later that the guide came back up to me and said, oh no, you are going to the apparition. And so um, I, I was present for an apparition with Maria and I, it was just the most special moment of my life probably. Why is so special? Well, you just you just know that when Maria goes to her knees and you know she's praying out loud and then all of a sudden her words disappear mm -hmm. and she she's just frozen, her her lips are moving, and you know that you're kneeling before the Blessed Mother mm -hmm. truly. I mean we can always kneel before Jesus 
before Our Lady, but when you're actually in the room with the apparition, um, you just feel it's just indescribable. Yeah, but you feel the presence, she's there, you, no? Yes, you feel the presence and you just know in your heart. Mm -hmm. um, I was praying for um, some friends who'd asked me to pray for their children. Mm -hmm. And when the apparition was over, Maria said one of the things that Our Lady said was that all of the people and the prayers that we had brought to her in our, in our heart, that she acknowledged all those. And so beautiful right? yeah. to know them. Huh? Yes, yes. And so. what is for you the most special place here in Medjugorje? Um, definitely, definitely from the very first, my first trip here, my, my favorite place is the outdoor altar during adoration. Mm. Um, and I find that interesting that I love it there so much because it's not very private. Mm. Um, you can go to the Blue Cross and have some privacy sometimes. Yeah. And, um, but when I go to adoration at the outdoor altar, and even though there's 3,000 people kneeling around you, I feel very alone in a good way. I feel that I am there with Jesus Christ all by myself. And I love it there. That's that's my favorite place. You always have been Catholic or you have a journey into no, the Catholic I was, faith? No, I was born and raised in the Catholic faith. Mm -hmm. um, Never, never lost my faith. Spent some time not going to church, um, but as I look back, that was probably more because I was uh, maybe being lazy, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I, but I never doubted. I've never, I've never been through, you know. I think I just went through a time of being lazy. Mm -hmm. um, but thank God that's over. <laughs> why, why is it over? Well, I mean, it's been over for years, but... Um, what happened that you suddenly became again a real I Catholic? I don't, Catholic. I don't know exactly what happened. Um, you know, maybe the Blessed Mother said, it's time for you to, you know... To join get, the party? To get back on your knees and yeah. get back into church and receive my son in the Eucharist. Yeah. And um, I threw myself into my faith wholeheartedly yeah. and I'm not going to look back. Yeah, I see you're shining, you're smiling <laughs> and um, you pray the rosy daily now? Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Um, it's the most powerful prayer behind the Holy Mass that there is and um, yes, it's nice to sit in adoration in perfect silence mm -hmm. But um, the rosary, Our Lady has said, it's our weapon, it's our sword, and our world, my country, mm -hmm. um, is going through so many difficult times. Our young people are going through such difficult times. Um, I really feel like the rosary is the answer to all of our problems. And you receive answers in the rosary prayer? That, yes, that definitely. and. Another thing that I would like to mention mm -hmm. is the church that I come from, mm -hmm. uh, St. Stanislaus. Mm -hmm. um, we have an adoration chapel 24-7 mm -hmm. um, that's been going on for over 30 years. Maybe, I don't know exactly, maybe closer to 40 years. Mm -hmm. And so most people in our parish have a holy hour mm -hmm. and they spend time in front of the Eucharist for an hour, you know, a week. Mm -hmm. um, and I just think that's such a powerful thing for my parish mm -hmm. um, and for all the people who live there. Mm -hmm. um, so just go to Holy Mass, um, pray the rosary, spend time in adoration, and a lot of your problems are going to be solved. Yeah, I believe so too. Yeah. Can you describe a bit what is the beauty of the Eucharist, of Holy Mass? A lot of Catholics don't craft the gift we get there. Uh, such an excellent question. And I, I wonder how, you, the more you pray, the more you're, you're going to believe um, and understand the Eucharist. But I do find that it's a challenge in my heart to how do I get the word out? How do I get the word to my family, mm -hmm. um, to my friends, that it truly is the divine presence of Jesus Christ? Um, 
it's a challenge to get people to understand that. Mm -hmm. But again, we pray that we present ourselves in such a way that we set an example for our family and for our friends and that they continue, you know, it's like compounding interest. You know, the yes. more people who, who set the example, the more people will catch on. Did you make the experience when you came back from Medjugorje that people said you changed? You're more smiling, you're more peace? Um, probably so. Um, I'm kind of an introvert mm -hmm. and um, I don't like to talk about it. That's why I didn't really want to sit down here with you. <laughs> I'm not biting. But the funny thing is, I've been watching you on YouTube and yeah. I and watch. You see the effects on all I the do. People, I know, watch so the videos do. and I, I watch where you go mm -hmm. and. I try to remember, you know, I say, oh, I remember that place, or I remember, I know the direction he's walking right now. Mm -hmm. And when I got here, it's so funny because mm -hmm. I thought, I wonder if I'm going to meet Tom from <laughs> Medjugorje. But you see, and you are delighting in the Lord, and it's written, if you delight in me, I give you the wishes of your heart. You understand? You yes. are happy with God, you are yes. in peace with yes. God, you have a relationship, and then he gives, he gives. People he don't gives. understand, you have to have the relationship, you know? Yes. How did you get that relationship with God? You have it. I oh, see. Uh, I don't know. Just just throwing myself into prayer and believing, mm -hmm. um, believing in the Eucharist, believing in the Rosary, um, believing in adoration. Mm -hmm. um, just but and you make the experience the more. See, it's an excuse I wasn't interrupting. And it, don't give up. You know, don't, don't, don't ever give up on the Lord because He's never going to give up on you. You made that in your heart? How did you make that experience? Because people have to make that experience that it's a living God and who wants to have a friendship. How, can you describe how you had this I experience? I think you just have to make up your mind you're going to do it. And, and don't be lazy. I mean, I spent some, don't be lazy in your faith. I, I spent some years where I was mm -hmm. and I regret that. And um, so I guess my best advice is um, don't let all the other things of the world distract you mm -hmm. from from your faith. Don't don't be lazy with your faith. Is you know, I like this question. I found that on YouTube. Somebody asked that. What is the biggest life lesson you learned? Or in another way, what would you tell your younger self now, being like the younger eighteen version now after um, living a life? Don't give up on your faith. Um, don't be lazy with your faith. Mm -hmm. And the hardest thing of all is to love everyone no matter what. Yeah. That's something that you learn here. Um, sometimes loving everyone, mm -hmm. um, how they hurt you or disappoint you or let you down can be really, really hard. Um, but that's the hardest thing for me, mm -hmm. but definitely something that I'm growing in. Mm -hmm. um, is to love everyone no matter what. Beautiful how you say. I think it's a decision. I say now every day when I judge, I say I'm not serving the God of judgment, I'm serving the God of mercy. And I pray just a bit of the rosary for the person because we are so often, ah, this person is doing this and that. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what I learned. We are all, it's our human condition, no? Yes. Somehow. We've all been hurt, we've all been deceived. Um, but. I like the way you said it. You said it much better than me. <laughs> no, it's just like, 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 you know, from the heart. And um, you go re confession regularly? Yes. Can you tell the beauty of it? Because a lot of people are scared these days in the West. They didn't go for a long time. They're scared. Um, it is hard to get back into confession. Um, just do it. Mm -hmm. Just, I remember, um, just recently going to confession and um, you know there's always that dread and stuff and when I came out um, and I was praying the rosary with a group of people that I was praying with and I remember almost laughing saying okay Jesus that was so easy you know and it felt so good so good no? and that rosary was just particularly special afterwards mm -hmm. and so um, don't mm -hmm. don't get it in your head that it's that it's awful or um, that you can't do it because you can do it mm -hmm. and once you're in there it's so easy to, because you're speaking to our Lord and 
and he's a Lord of mercy. Yes. So, oh, that's yeah. no, and he's so happy that you're there. Yeah. You know, um, he's he's not remembering your sins. He's showering you with mercy. Yes, and, so. and graces, no, and freedom and happiness and yes. peace and joy. Yes, yes. And do um, you have a favorite saint? Oh, definitely St. Bernadette. Why? Um, you know, funny thing, I think St. Bernadette was working in my life when I was in elementary school. Mm -hmm. As I look back, mm -hmm. I, um, I don't, of course I didn't realize it then, but um, I love her story. Mm -hmm. And I took her as my patron saint when I was confirmed. Mm -hmm. And I continue to, um, watch movies about her and read about her and study her mm -hmm. and I don't know I love a lot of saints mm -hmm. um, I love Saint Faustina of course I love Saint John Paul II mm -hmm. um, Saint Faustina uh, Saint Therese of Lisieux, um, of Lisieux. Uh, well just her simpleness yes. that's another thing about Medjugorje is uh, Our Lady wants everything she wants you to live a simple life mm -hmm. and she doesn't expect big fancy prayers just simple prayers yes. from the heart but, no? yes yes so, and I love Mother Teresa there's so many but definitely Saint Bernadette is my favorite saint you got a favorite Bible scripture like oh um, I think lately I've been focusing a lot on the Gospel of John and particularly chapter six because I I feel like that specifically defines our Catholic faith mm -hmm. and as I try to get people to believe in the Eucharist um, the way we're supposed to I think that's the one that that simplifies it and what does it say in chapter six well I won't quote it no, perfectly no, I know sense, but that's that's where God says you must eat the bread and drink the wine um, to receive eternal life. And, and I think that's where he explained to us that he is in the Eucharist, that he is the Eucharist. Yes. Powerful, because we have to get that back. That's the center of our faith. That's the center the of our faith. Person, right? And I think that's where we're hurting the most. Mm -hmm. um, we can, the, all of the Catholics that have left the church, yeah. um, if we can get them to understand that, they'll be back. Because if they truly, truly believed, um, they would never leave. So. Wow, so powerful what you're saying. <laughs> and that would be maybe also answer the question like, um, a friend of mine, she had a dream, and in the dream, Jesus came and asked her, what are you doing for me in your life? What would you answer to that question? Oh, um, I don't know. Um, I'm praying a lot. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes when you want to help people and you don't know how to do it um, in front of them or you don't know how to get them to straighten up their lives, you can just quietly, privately pray for them and they don't even know about it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very powerful. Um, I don't know. I, I pray that Jesus puts me where he wants me. I'm recently retired. Mm -hmm and I hope that he uses me the way he wants. He gives me the work he wants me to do. Um, Beautiful. And what would you tell people you are retired now? Young people look for their vocation, profession. What would you give them as an advice after living your working life? Oh, um, don't let your work um, get in the way of your faith. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we work so hard and so much mm -hmm. that by the end of the day we're so tired that we forget to say our rosary or um, we don't want to get up early and do our prayers but um, don't let anything get in the way of your faith that you found a treasure golden treasure it seems. i did i definitely did and why what is so beautiful about our catholic faith uh the eucharist, the eucharist. <laughs> we're, we're the only religion that has it yes and how how could you be Catholic and turn away from that? I just don't understand. Yeah, because so. you know it's it's for say yeah, for things people perish because they're not educated. That's what we drive mm -hmm. is the video to, to give right. some information on what is the center of our faith. Right. And what would you tell people why come to Medjugorje now? Because there's no place like it on the world. Yeah. Um, you get a feeling here that's indescribable. Mm -hmm. um, 
and you c I don't know it's just come don't don't let your life slip away without getting here and can you explain to our Protestant friends there's some watching and what is the role of our lady in our faith in the Catholic faith oh my goodness um, I love the Blessed Mother I've always loved the Blessed Mother um, even when I wasn't good about going to church um, she is she is truly your mother truly your mother she is going to love you no matter what she's going to take care of you no matter what she's going to lead you um, no matter what and just for other people who are parents and you know how much you love your children and what you would do for your children no matter what they do to you um, times that by a million and that's how our Blessed Mother is taking care of us mm -hmm. that's why she gave us the opportunity of Medjugorje and she's going to keep coming here as long as her son will allow her to um, that's what she, I understand she said in the messages mm -hmm. and we need to be so grateful for that she's not given up on us she's been coming here for 43 years my goodness you'd think she'd be tired <laughs> <laughs> it's all but, what you do, no? <laughs> yes exactly but she the love is just unbelievable, and she's not ever going to give up on us or let go of us. Like a good mother. Like a good mother. You have <clears throat> one of the messages with what, what, which touched your heart a lot. Um, you know, I followed the messages mm -hmm. for quite a while, for eh? close to forty years, probably. I don't know, remember exactly when I mm -hmm. learned about Medjugorje, but I was, I was in my early thirties. I was mm -hmm. late twenties, early thirties when I first learned about it. And um, just this most recent message in the last few months, mm -hmm. the message to the world, it was one sentence. And um, it was so simple, but so powerful. And she just said, pray, pray, pray. Um, this is a time of grace. I don't remember the me message exactly, yeah. but um, yeah. it was, she just said, pray, pray, pray three times. And you know, I think these wars, the war in Ukraine and the war in Israel, um, we, we can do our part to end these wars if we will pray and fast. And the Blessed Mother has said the rosary and fasting can end wars. And it, she means it. And if you want to do your part to put these wars to an end, pray and fast. Easy for you fasting? How is that for you? So I guess I'll tell you something that I've really only told my husband, um, maybe one other person. Um, when I decided to come back here a second time, I wasn't sure about, again, traveling alone at my age or spending the money since I was going into retirement. Um, there were a lot of things that I thought, should I really go a second time? So. I decided to pray and fast about it, and I knew that if the Blessed Mother wanted me here, she would get me here, but I wanted to prove to her mm -hmm. that, that how deep my love for her was and that I really wanted to come back. Mm -hmm. So I made up my mind on January 1st that I would um, fast from every drink except water mm -hmm. until she got me back here. Mm -hmm. And so for 101 days, mm -hmm. I drank no coffee, no soda, mm -hmm. no tea, no wine, nothing except water for 101 days. Um, and I said, when I get to Medjugorje, I'm going to have a cup of coffee with Our Lady. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you did? And I did. Well, actually, the first thing they served me when I got here was a glass of wine, mm -hmm. which I thought was kind of funny. Um, <laughs> Even better. That's and interesting. And yeah. because the Blessed Mother knew that I, I guess maybe she gave me a glass of red wine because oh, she wanted me. Red wine, yes, eh? yes. Uh -huh. I wondered that. I even took a picture of it and yeah. texted it to my husband. Yeah. Um, but uh, it, 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 it's not that hard. Once you make up your mind, you're going to do it. Um, you get the grace. You do. And the interesting thing is, the most difficult days for me mm -hmm. were the days I traveled here. Mm -hmm. 
because you're laying over in the airport and you just want a cup of coffee or you know I don't know it's funny how um, everywhere I would go I would see a big bottle of Pepsi yeah. and, I, and, yeah, and, yeah. and it would well, be real easy to me yeah it would be real easy to say yeah. oh I'm I've made it a hundred days I'm only eight hours from Medjugorje I can go ahead and drink that cup of coffee mm -hmm. but I would say That's to myself me. I, I promised you, Blessed Mother, that I was not going to drink anything but water until I got back to Medjugorje. And, and even though I was really, really tempted right towards the end, I did make it. And, and I, I just want to tell people, um, just give it a try. Um, baby steps, you know, maybe at first. Um, I'm going to try to do much better with fasting on Wednesdays and Fridays when I get home because I've learned more here and, and I know that I can do, I know that I can fast now because I made it 101 days and so. And you are married. What would you give people as an advice that the battle is for the marriage? How to have Definitely. a healthy marriage? Um, pray for love. That's pray for love. yeah. This. Just pray that um, Jesus is the center of your marriage and go to church together. Yeah. Um, I can tell you that um, I did the, the 33 days of consecration to St. Joseph um, where I consecrated my husband and my son and my brother mm -hmm. to St. Joseph because they're men, men of the house. They're the man of the house. and. Um, Every Sunday that I kneel by my husband in church, I thank St. Joseph for the work he's doing in my family, and I thank him for the man that's kneeling next to me in church. What can I say? Thank you for that beautiful interview. Well, thank you. It's so exciting to meet you because I've been watching you. You look at both here.